I was the principal investigator for the um, pre-0505 study. Um, this was a multi-center um, study in a newly diagnosed unresectable mesothelioma. Um, and the study involved a single arm of uh, combining standard chemotherapy, which is cisplatin and pamitrexid, with the anti pd one um, antibody uh, durvalumab. And um, the rationale for this study was that we have seen um, single agent activity uh, with PD-1 pathway blockade in mesothelioma patients who've received prior chemotherapy. And we've also seen uh, synergy in other tumor types between chemotherapy and PD-1 pathway blockade, such as lung cancer, for example. Um, so we commenced this study in um, 2017, and uh, the plan was to accrue a total of 55 patients across 15 centers here in the United States. Um, patients would receive up to six cycles of chemotherapy combined with dervalumab, and then would continue on um, single-agent dervalumab for up to one year in total of treatment um, if there was no progression of their disease. Um, the primary endpoint of the study was looking at um, overall survival compared to historical control. And the historical control was the, um, the registration study, which led to approval of pemetrexid cisplatin back in 2004, where the median survival was 12 months. Um, so in this study, we were aiming for a median um, overall survival of 19 months um, in order to um, declare the study positive. As I said, we accrued the patients in just over a year. Um, so back in, we completed accrual in mid um, 2018. And now we have mature overall survival from the study. And that shows that the median overall survival from the study was 20.4 um, months. And it was a positive study by definition of the um, study plan. Um, so showing that median survival was prolonged compared to historical control. Um, we also found that the treatment was that was well tolerated in general with no um, unusual or unexpected side effects and no should other than those which are known to occur with chemotherapy and immunotherapy. We also um, performed a number of correlative analysis, including whole exome sequencing of tumor and normal, um, PDL1 and CD8 dual um, um, immunohistochemical staining of the primary tumors and TCR sequencing, T-cell receptor sequencing of the primary as well. So at the ASCO meeting, we are presenting um, some of those correlative data, including analysis showing that there was no correlation between um, PD-L1 um, uh, positive staining and um, survival with chemoimmunotherapy. Equally, there was no significant um, difference in overall survival between those patients who had higher tumor uh, mutation burden compared to those with lower tumor uh, mutation burden. Um, the third analysis, uh, or the third correlative analysis we're presenting at ASCO looks at, um, uses an assay called MANIFEST, uh, which is an immune assay trying to, um, to show functional T cell responses to, um, uh, to new antigens or abnormal peptides from uh, mutations in the tumor. And we know that mesothelioma has a low tumor mutation burden. However, somewhat surprisingly, um, Dr. Kelly Smith, who's a colleague of mine at Hopkins, was able to show that um, despite relatively low numbers of mutations, um, some of those mutations appeared to be immunogenic and led to, um, and led to uh, responses, uh, T cell responses, which were um, detectable using the patient's autologous T cells. Um, so overall, these are the initial um, results from the study, um, and there are additional correlative analysis going forward um, in collaboration with colleagues from Australia, um, Dr. Anna Nowak, who's based in Perth. We are conducting a phase three study evaluating cisplatin pemetrexid dervalumab compared to the standard of cisplatin pemetrexid, and that study should commence accrual in the next few months in the US and Australia, and it's known as the DREAMER study. Yeah, I think it's an interesting um, point, and it's one that we're trying to tease out with some of the correlative analysis. Um, the the promised meso was obviously in patients who had received prior chemotherapy, um, and we have seen in other tumor types that apart, it appears that at least in some tumor types, um, 
uh, there appears to be more benefit from immunotherapy when given in the first line setting. So for example, in lung cancer, um, in unselected uh, patients, uh, the response to immunotherapy is about 15 to 20%. However, when it's moved forward to the first line setting and in those patients with higher PDL1, that response rate can go up closer to 50%. Um, and we also see benefit from chemoimmunotherapy in the first line setting in lung cancer even though there was a relatively modest benefit from, from single agent immunotherapy in the second and third line setting. Um, so it could be that we're uh, recapitulating those findings in mesothelioma, uh, where there's a negative study in the second line setting compared to chemotherapy, uh, but potentially combination chemo immunotherapy may have more benefit in the first line. However, we have to show that in a phase three study, uh, which is the plan for the ongoing DREAMer study. Um, we're also, as a group, we're looking at single agent immunotherapy in other settings, including looking at um, anti-PD-1 in the neoadjuvant setting in, in mesothelioma and another study um, where we're planning to do similar correlative analysis.